I don't care who Michael Jordan was matched up against. He was ready to go. And there's right. nothing, absolutely nothing overrated about Michael Jordan as a defender. Nothing. All right. Michael Jordan is an un- overrated and overrated defensive player. Coach Scott, you the Jordan hater up here. I mean, you're the guy who says Jordan's overrated sometimes. A little bit. I'm just playing. I hope you never say that. Is Michael Jordan overrated in his defensive skills? I think I think that Michael Jordan as a as a as a defensive player, I think he proved that in his era he was one of the greatest defenders of all time throughout his era. But when we look at the full body of work, Mike did what everybody what all great players do. He picked his spots. He picked his spots to be great. What does that mean? <laughs> what, what does that what, even mean? What, like, what, what do you mean? What do you what, what did he go that, stand is, on a spot what, on the court or something? Like, what does that what, mean? What, what what that actually means is there were times in their clear distinct, distinctive times where you where you see Mike not going and reaching, you're reaching for the reaching to play hard basketball, playing man oh man basketball. It was times where Mike was resting on his defense to give more to the offensive side of the ball. It was it's clear distinct times that we can watch and we can see that, but. As a whole, yeah, Michael Jordan was a great defender. But there are times where you can you can watch the game and see where Mike is resting on the defensive side of the ball to pour it on on the offensive side of the ball. It's clear. Coach Scott. Hmm. Coach Scott. All great players do it. Well, I'm glad you said that because I was going to ask oh, no, you. It's, uh, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. It's not just Michael Jordan. It, that's, that's the intelligence of the Michael Jordan. That's what makes him great. He 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 understands how to pace the game. He paces the he paced the game probably better than any player I've ever seen play the game. He knew when to say when. He knew when to turn it on. He knew when to facilitate. He knew when to let his guys kind of front run to give him a chance to be able to have that break. That when you got in the fourth, it was it was air time. So, do you believe that? Um... Michael Jordan. All right. So you say he picked his spots. Maybe he had his moments or whatever. But primarily speaking, does he play at both ends of the court? 100 percent. 100 percent. Primarily. Generally speaking. Just like, generally speaking, yes. So yes. If we say he's, if he's he played a, 10 he's, games. He's, he's, if he plays 10 ultimate. games. Hold on. Hold on. If he played 10 games. Eight or nine of those. Eight or nine of those games out of the 10. Is he hustling back and forth on both ends of the court? Yes. Yes. Okay. All that right. that's that's what made Michael Jordan Michael Jordan. His competitive greatness was was unparalleled to any athlete to ever play basketball. Period. Other than Kobe Bean Bryant, I would say so. Okay, yeah, I agree. Coach Dale, thoughts? Is he overrated? Jordan <laughs> overrated on defense. I don't know what the definition of overrated is. Right? Is that subjective? I was disappointed when I heard Rasheed Wallace say that. You know, I'm a Rasheed Wallace guy. He's an old school guy. You know, he's a defensive guy. He's the physical, you know, rough guy. Like, I don't know what was his motive in that. I don't, I, I mean, I don't know. Like, can you come up with clips where you see somebody, you know, dropping off Jordan or whatever? Of course. The, the, the way I see it is you can't get crossed over unless you're trying to play defense. True enough, Allen Iverson got him. You know, a couple guys got him, but... It wasn't from a lack of effort. It's just that you cannot get a stop every play. Right. All right. Michael Jordan's defensive player of the year. Nine-time first team all defense. Just tied with number one all time. Three-time steal leader. He's number four all time in steals. NBA history. He's number two in blocks amongst guards in NBA history. Okay? Let me read you something. Because so many people over the years claim that Scottie Pippen was the go-to stopper or the best defender on the team, whatever, whatever, whatever. Okay. If you don't know what defensive win Fake shares news. are, uh, defensive no. win shares are no. the, et- the estimated number of wins contributed by a player due to his defense. That's what defensive win shares are. Outside of the 85, 86 season when he broke his foot, Michael Jordan was number one on the team in defensive win shares up until the 1996 season. Okay? 
So let's not get it confused. True enough. Hey, Jordan's uh, number one uh, primary goal or number one uh, purpose on that team was to put the ball in the basket. That wasn't Scotty's. Okay. So if you expect Michael Jordan to drop 35 points a game and go out and guard the best player every single possession, something's wrong with you. Of course, Scotty could do that at times because he didn't have the load that Jordan had. But when it was time to play defense, okay, I don't care who Michael Jordan was matched up against. He was ready to go. And there's right. nothing, absolutely nothing overrated about Michael Jordan as a defender. Nothing. There's nothing you can say that's overrated, okay? Nothing. You agree, Coach Scott? <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. I like his argument. I, I, I mean, to be to be fair, yeah, he, he's right. He's right. To be fair, so let's solidify it a little bit. <clears throat> um, yeah, when Rasheed said that, I was a little disappointed too. But he's a Detroit. He's a Detroit guy. You, you, you gotta, you gotta yeah, understand that. That's that. Make, you know what? You that's under, true. You gotta understand the history that's of that. Point. That, that's true. I didn't think about that. That is very yeah, true. He's he's not going to relinquish that to a bull. Not 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 in the least. Yeah, that makes sense. But you know, you know who else says this? Who have they built this narrative? LeBron fans. And I'm not talking about Coach Scott, but most LeBron fans have gone with this myth that since the 1991 playoffs, when Jordan picked up two quick fouls in the first quarter when Pippen had to guard Magic, that Scotty always guarded the best players. This is a myth, right? Let's put this myth to bed real quick. Let me just read it. Let me read you guys something real quick. So let's start from game one to game five. Let's just go on through game five because it was a 4-1 series. Game one, MJ guards Magic, Magic, the majority, the majority of the game. MJ guarded Magic. Magic had 19, uh, 10, and 11. Now get this, though. He only got two points. Magic only scored two points when Jordan was guarding him. He picked up his points to transition the other when Jordan wasn't on him. Game two, okay, MJ picks up two quick fouls. They put Pippen on him. This is where the LeBron fans get the narrative that, hey, well, Pippen always guards the best player. This is what they're running with. Game three, Pippen only guarded Magic eight possessions. Uh, he fouled out, and, Ma- and MJ got back on Magic in the fourth quarter. They went to overtime, holding Magic to 0, 0, 0, and 0 in two turnovers. He locked Magic down. Um, game four, uh, MJ guarded Magic. He was uh, the primary defender. Pippen only guarded Magic for 12 possessions. That was it. In game five, uh, Scotty got it. He, he guarded Magic once. All right. He once. In that series, Magic Johnson averaged 18.6 points, 12 assists, and eight rebounds. Jordan averaged 31 points, 11 assists, and six rebounds. Jordan was dominant in that series. But this is the narrative that's being pushed that Michael Jordan does not. He's an overrated defender. And it's only being pushed by one group of people. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. Now, let's let's go a little bit further. And I'm going I'm to ask your thoughts on this. The 92 finals, Michael Jordan guarded Clyde Drexler, a top five shooting guard of all time, who averaged 25 points per game. But in the 92 finals, Michael Jordan was guarding him, shutting him down. Drexler was getting all of his points when Jordan was not sticking him. But when Jordan was on Drexler, he was shutting him down. Coach Jail, is this an exaggeration? Why are they running with this narrative that Michael Jordan is it's simply to push the GOAT, the, the GOAT debate, the GOAT argument? Because when we look at the numbers, when we look at the facts, and if you watch the games, you saw what happened. What is it called? What do they call it? That recency bias? Coach Jail, wait. Of course it is. And, so, and, and as I always say, mm-hmm. HDTV has fooled us and spoiled us, okay? Really? These games wasn't in HD, so people don't want to watch them. The younger generation <laughs> don't want to watch them, okay? And the older generation either are uh, just the LeBron James on the LeBron James bandwagon or they forgot. I don't understand how you can watch Michael Jordan and say he was an overrated defender. Yeah. I don't get it. You get what I'm saying? I, I just do not get it. I don't understand that. What about his defense was overrated? What about it? Like he's literally, like arguably, if you if, if there was a poll, who's the best defender of all time? I'm not saying Michael Jordan would finish number one, okay? But he would be somewhere at the top of that list if there was a poll. He just would. 
So when it comes down to it, because <clears throat> that's the narrative that's being pushed, well, George, Magic was killing Michael. So they had to put Pippen on him. That narrative, Jordan, that narrative, that narrative has been stated. It's not LeBron James fans. That's I, no, 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 no. That narrative, that narrative. No, 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 no. Every time I hear it, every time I'm tagged in a post, that's who it is. I'm not saying that they. Uh, I, I, I give this to you. Maybe somebody else runs with it as well, but it's definitely LeBron James fans. Every time, I mean, yeah. I get tagged. That's the primary. That's the primary source they go to. Was the '91 Lakers series when Michael Jordan guarded Magic? The primary, well, the the most throughout the entire series. But they go to game, uh, the game two, the quick two fouls, Pippen guards Magic, yada 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 yada. But that is what they go to. But just to add some uh, 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 stats to solidify what we're talking about, then we're gonna go to the next segment. So, for example, <clears throat> let me just read through these real quick. All right, here's a, here's a it's an incomplete list of notable offensive matchups that Jordan guarded. And we're talking about the playoffs. When it came down to Isaiah Thomas, Jordan guarded him. Charles Barkley, brief stretches, Jordan guarded Charles. 91 finals, Jordan guarded Magic. James Worthy, brief stretches, Jordan guarded James Worthy. Clyde Drexler, it was Jordan. Tyler, uh, uh, Terry Porter, Jordan. Kevin Johnson, Jordan. Tim Hardaway, Jordan. Penny Hardaway, Gary Payton, Ross Strickland, Steve Smith, Reggie Miller, and John Stockton. In brief stretches, it was all Michael Jordan who was guarding them. And in the 1998 playoffs, when they was playing in Indiana uh, in Game 7, Reggie Miller... Was tw- at 22 points. He was 7 of 12 shooting at 50, uh, 58%. In the fourth quarter, Michael Jordan had to switch to Reggie to make sure they didn't win that game, holding Reggie Miller to zero points. Reggie was only a- able to attempt one shot. If Pippen was a guy who guarded all the toughest matchups, why would Phil continue to put Michael on all of these players and not Scotty? That's a myth. Again, I agree with Coach J.O. H H D T V. You say right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a big myth. And this is the thing too. This is a narrative, right? On one hand, and I'm gonna say LeBron James fans because they're the culprits, right? They'll say <laughs> they can't Michael be Jordan the culprit if he, it was he, he, started he play, prior he to. Come on, man. Well, they're running with it. He didn't play against no real scores. But then on the flip side, you'll say, "Well, Pippen had to guard everybody." Like, which one is it? Good point. You get what I'm saying. He didn't Pippen, play anybody Pippen, or Pippen, Pippen had to guard Pippen everybody. Did, Which one? Pippen did the majority of the guarding of the score. Jordan switched to the best. It just proved that was false. Jordan would play for ball denial. That's how that's how you get those stats where you you see the dramatic drops off. You Reggie Miller, he had ball, he, he was literally denying him the ball. He they ball denial is a is a is a defensive tactic. Like like H, like when you say we say HDTV, w- rewind them classes. Go back on them old classics and, and just watch. He is Reggie Michael Miller Jordan's doing got a, the Michael ball. Jordan's doing a phenomenal was- job of of ball denial. Reggie You're Miller got case. the ball. He was only able to shoot it once when Jordan locked him up. He was getting the ball. Not to mention Vince Carter, three years in the league, he's at his, he's bouncing through the gym. Michael Jordan switches on Vince Carter the entire second half after having 22 point first half, holds him to zero. And this was the wizard Michael Jordan. Some of that defensive problems are still there. But with that being said, we got to move to the next um, segment. Here's the question, guys. Stephen A. Smith. Coach Scott, I'll start with you. <laughs> Stephen A. Smith versus, um, what do I want to say? The Pelicans organization, are they really, did they really respond and come for Stephen A.? Did they really do this to Stephen A. Smith? Was it called yeah. for? Did he ask for this? He probably yes. did. Yes, and they need to wear his arse out because <laughs> Stephen A. has a, he has a, he has a bad habit. He has a bad habit of poking the bear. Journalism, all time great. He he might be the goat as it pertains to uh, journalism and 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 what he brings to the game. You know, uh, but he pokes the bear. He knows what he knows, but then he takes that extra step. He's a habitual mm-hmm. line stepper, and it has to be. And, and you not only. Not only the the Pelicans, but you see other players are now coming to the defense of NBA players that it, that Stephen A. has disrespected over the past based off of what he feels he knows so much about. 
and 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 players are getting tired of it. So the organization yeah. themselves, they are wearing him out, and they need to wear him out. And he <laughs> and he, he 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 wears Arsh out, and he and he needs to just he, he he's got to settle down a little bit. He's got to settle down, you know. Hey, Coach Jo, um, I agree with Coach Scott a thousand percent. Um, we can call Stephen A. to go. Now, truth be told, just because you the go. That don't mean you're a good person or a likable person. You see how the Bulls right. teammates feel about Jordan. They don't like him, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we can look at, at least you, I always say America, you know, we, we, we can look at our, we can look at the history here. You know, America didn't become America by not being America. They had to be America to become America. Right. If you get what I'm saying with that being said, you know, Stephen A didn't become Stephen A without being Stephen A. I think this is something Kwame Brown was pointing out as well like yep. there are some questionable yep. things like why do you have to say the things that you say now when it comes right. down to zion um i maybe he could have reworded that i understand the point he was trying to make hey you're in the, you're in a league where you make millions of dollars you need to come in and shape but did you have to throw the hamburgers and pizzas and fat did, no, he didn't. did, no, he did didn't. it have to come out that way but at the same time coach jo that's what get the views nobody watch it's entertainment Right. So, again, is he to go of journalism? Maybe so. But how he got there, did he take the high road or the low road? There's a lot of people saying he's taking the low road. What's your thoughts? Mm. Now, I don't want to make this a black and white thing, but we got to talk about it. Right. There's a lot of the African-American brothers who feel like they are unjustly criticized by Stephen A. Smith. Absolutely. It's not fair. Why like why don't you use this same energy with the white athletes? You literally go on <clears throat> emotional rants. He went on a like ESPN allowed this man to have an almost 15, 20 minute segment, literally breaking down every terrible play that Kwame Brown had. And he literally tried to humiliate this man on national TV. He did it. He did Lamar Odom the same way. Lamar Odom was going through some of the roughest times of his life. And he literally got on national TV and said, the man smokes crack. Okay? Like, where's the, the, the empathy for these players? Where is it? Okay? Now, don't get me wrong. Zion Williamson is a professional athlete. He makes millions of dollars. He should be able to have thick skin, right? But me personally, the guy could be your son. He can be your son, right? There's right. ways to come at Zion than talking about the cheeseburgers and the – y'all, dude, get in shape. But to re- you're trying to humiliate him, okay? You're not trying to encourage him, Stephen A. You're trying to humiliate him, and that's not cool. That's not cool at all. I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And with the whole Kwame thing, when he took that airtime to do that, I would, I'm just going to be honest. Again, I, I've said it. I think Stephen A is the, the goat of the journalism role. But I thought that was one of the weakest responses I've ever seen. Ever. Yep. A blooper reel that every, you can go get Michael Jordan's blooper reel. You can go get LeBron James's blooper reel. Every player got you, it. Magic Johnson, Kareem, every player got we. So to say, you you don't play 12 years in the NBA by being a bad player. Oh, he's horrible. Oh, he would have been gone year one, year two. You know? So that response, to me, that was that was personal. It was an attack. And the same thing with Zion. Like it was, it, it could have been said differently. You know, the thing with Lamar Odom, I'm like, oh my God, it that didn't have to be said at all. Um, it's it comes to a point we understand, like Coach Scott, the NBA, we know. It, we just finished talking about the ex Grizzlies uh, scorekeeper who came to the understanding this is entertainment and the people we gotta do what we gotta do to make the people watch. Okay, we get it. Ratings are dropping. We gotta do what we gotta do. But and so if you're covering it, guess what? You have to cover entertainment, which means you have to be entertaining. I get it. I, I understand all that. But to what extent? When do you say, oh, right. you know what? Maybe we can help lead and guide these young guys by giving them some good advice. Or we're just going to continue to trash them so I can continue to get my numbers up to where I want them to be and do it so do so by crapping on you. I agree. Coach Scott, I mean, go ahead and I'll pass the mic because talking about that, you you it gets you a little frustrated. 
You know what I mean? Absolutely. It does. Absolutely. It does. I, I mean, I, I have you. I think you guys summed it up. I think I, I you know, that if, if we if we were in a, if we were in a basketball gym, I just threw the lob. I threw the lob and y'all and y'all double dunked it. Right. I mean, it, it's 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 something that that is been done multiple times on right. multiple players in a multiple in a multiplicity of ways and it's not fair it's just no empathy it is a personal jab a personal attack and it's being seen and it's been seen over and over and over again and these athletes are like all right okay here's 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 how we get back here's how we get back at him and you know, now it's the organization and, you know, the organization just got a little bit more money than Stephen A and, 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 and they're wearing them out. Yeah, man. Just now when, now when your bloopers are being released, <laughs> your, mm. your bloopers, <laughs> you're, we're upset now. We're going to do a show about it and things of like that. No, keep the same energy as when you release Kwame Brown's right. bloopers, you know, right. yep. keep the same energy, yep. you know? And, and one thing about that whole thing is y- you guys were talking about a man who, hadn't said nothing to you in 20 years. Why was his name continued? When this first started coming out, you know, I, I, w- I was really not knowing what was going on. But then as I listened a little bit, I'm like, oh, that's a good question. Well, I mean, why are you continuing to say this? Like, what is behind the scenes, you know, that got you saying this? We get the entertainment, but you guys are making entertainment off somebody who you ain't who ain't said a word in 20 years. It's right, crazy. Right. So, right. Coach L, I, I I get it, man. Now that the, the energy is on you, you're upset. I mean, what what was it? Uh, what were the stats? It was the uh, the stats, and I don't even know him honestly. Uh, it was a college. He went down and made like 17 three pointers in a row, and got a scholarship offer. And he averaged what? It was 1.5 points per game, and I think it was in through one game. Something. How? How's that possible? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I just, <laughs> like, like, literally, like, how is that possible? Like, man, I don't know. I'm, is, I'm, is it even mathematically possible? I, I don't know. One point five, right? I, one game, one point five. It's something like that. I, I maybe I could be wrong about it because I, I didn't take the time to like really memorize it. But my thing is this, man. Again, when you get to certain levels. Man, when you're in certain positions, when you're in certain places, when you have a certain voice that reaches a certain amount of people, if I say things about, okay, I have a whole nother platform than this, right? And you guys know about it. I got a whole other platform. You know, we're, it, we're, 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 we've crossed the 200 million view mark. Just imagine if I was over there using that platform to just tear down innocent people, right? Sully people's name, yeah. Just imagine how many people I've reached and you don't understand until you start walking out in the street and somebody starts to recognize you, but they recognize you based off of what somebody else stated. So let's just be honest. Most people don't think for themselves nowadays. They only, they're going to think about you, what somebody told them to think about you. And now right. that's not even, a, you know, it's not fair. So I think we need to be responsible as, you know, a people, whoever has a, a, a reach like that. And, I have nowhere near. You guys have nowhere near the reach that a Stephen A. Smith has. I think he needs to be a little bit more responsible, no matter how successful he is. And you know, you know, you put out what you you, you get back what you put out. You put out. Yeah. All right. All right. Welcome to the Goat Debate, the premier online sports debate show where engaging discussions and thrilling debates unfold as we determine who is the greatest of all time in every sport. I am your host, Abaya Israel, joined by my two co-hosts, Coach Scott and Coach J.O. Tune into our YouTube and Facebook channels to catch our reactions and coverage of the biggest games and the latest news. Don't miss out on your chance to participate in the action. Join us every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for The Goat Debate, where you, the viewer, can call in and share your thoughts on who deserves the title of the GOAT. Be sure to mark your calendars. Every Monday, we upload 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, and we go live every Tuesday night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to subscribe, call in, and participate. Come and be a part of the conversation.